Psalms chapter number 85. I'm going to read all 13 verses, and we'll see what God has for us this evening. Verse number 1 says, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land, thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob, thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people, thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath, thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thou may rejoice, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall book down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give, shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, we do thank you again for just the honor and the privilege that we have to be here this evening, Lord. Lord, I'm just so thankful for the blessing, the honor, uh, Lord, to be able to stand behind this desk and preach your word, Lord. Lord, never want to take that for granted, never want to take it lightly, Lord. And I just ask you to be with what you've laid upon my heart tonight, Lord, that it just be a help and encouragement to your people. Lord, if there's anybody that coming here tonight lost, Lord, we just ask you to save them for it be eternally too late. Lord, we ask you just continue to help our pastor as he's away. Lord, you just bless and you just use him. Lord, you just lift him up. And, and uh, Lord, that when he comes back, Lord, that we have the same fire that he'll have. Uh, Lord, that when we see revival break out this very Sunday, Lord, that we have a uh, may break out in a meeting before the following week ever comes about. Lord, I ask you just help us now through the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at is we just see strictly in verse number 1 and 2, we see and think about the blessings that we have. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. And verse number three, thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thy anger. You think of the blessings that we have in our life, things that we tend to overlook. Uh, we actually got in the car on the way here tonight and I asked, uh, Belle looked like she's about to fall asleep. I asked her, I said, are you feel all right? Yep. Are you good? Yep. Are you blessed? Yep. And too many times we don't even think about exactly how blessed we truly are. Uh, we get so caught up in the things that are going on in this world and we can lose sight at times of how blessed we are and the blessings that we have and that we enjoy day to day. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tina called this morning on her way to work and she was talking about a little video uh, that Bella had to watch something for school today and, and this family, and I don't remember how many of them there was, and some of you other school kids might have watched the same thing, I have no idea, uh, but they wanted to buy a house, Brother Donald. They couldn't afford to buy a house, so they bought some kind of little building or something. If I'm not mistaken, I don't remember if it was four kids or a family of four, 285 square feet. That's what they lived in. That's what they had to live in to try to save money to be able to buy a house. And I'm willing to bet none of us drove here uh, from a 285 square foot house tonight. Most of us all live in nicer places. We probably drove a nicer vehicle than they have. We lose sight at times of the blessings uh, that we have. And we lose sight of that, and we end up in verse, it talks a little bit about in verse number four, we end up going backwards. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Too many times we have to be turned because we're headed in the wrong direction. Right. Too many times God has to use someone or something or somebody uh, to get our attention to turn us uh, to head back towards him. But I want to look at verses 9 through 13, and we see just this beautiful picture of what God can do for us. In verse number 9, it says, Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord that, that shall give that which is good to our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. You go back and think about just counting our blessings and think about how beautiful the things is that God can do for us. Right. You know, we hear it all the time. Count your blessings. Start writing them down. If you start feeling down, uh, what good it would do for us sometimes just to turn and open up some pages out of his word and read uh, the things that he can do for us. How come we lose sight of that beautifulness? How come we lose sight of our blessings and we get turned around backwards 
because too many times in verse number 8, I will hear what the Lord God, God the Lord will speak, for he, speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Because too many times we have blunders in our life. We end up in folly. We end up turned around uh, going the wrong way from what God would have for us to do. Uh, we end up getting too caught up in worldly things or things that are outside of his word, uh, things that are outside of what his will is for us. It don't even necessarily have to be sinful things or bad things. Just getting away from whatever God's will is for our life. We get back in the state too many times that we get to, which gets me back to verse number 6, where I want to take our text from, or the message from tonight. Many times when I would do the sign and we would have revival coming up and I would end up, uh, God would lead me to this verse time and time again. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Again. And again. And again, Brother Phil, we ask him for revival. Why? I talked about this in Sunday school last week a little bit. If you was in the Sunday school class, and I was trying not to go too in-depth, so I didn't preach the message that God had already laid in my heart for tonight. This June, Sister Tina and I will have been here for around 20 years. I started to ask Brother Doug, and I didn't do it, just because I know it's probably in the hundreds, the number of meetings that we have had in that 20 years. From weekend meetings to camp meetings to revival meetings, from things that were planned, uh, we've had meetings that have gotten extended. We've had weekend meetings go into a couple weeks. Week meetings go into a few weeks. Last summer, we we seen a wonderful meeting that extended on for a few uh, a few months. Uh, you know, skipping a few weeks here and there, whatever it may be. But we've seen a lot of things get extended. But unfortunately, too many times we heard it talked about a little bit last week. We return to the just leaves part. When he come on that fig leaf, uh, that fig tree, what did he find? Just leaves. Why do we go back to just leaves? We've heard it said here many times. We've heard some of the best preachers and the best preaching in the country come through this pulpit. Not tonight, obviously, but many other times. We're without excuse before tonight of some of the preaching that we've heard come through here not to continually be in that state of revival. Why do we continually fall back and allow the world to get to us and just fall back in the routine? That we just come and go just like normal. We don't give it a second thought. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, we'll come in right on time or we'll come in late. We come in, we've not prayed for service the way we should have. We've not done, we've not prepared our hearts the way we should. We've allowed the world to get to us on a Wednesday and we come in just all, uh, uh, just disheveled. I don't know if that's even a word. It's the first thing popped in my head. Uh, but just, just all out of, out of sorts, hoping that God's going to show up and do something. What God laid in my heart and what I want to preach on tonight, we have revival starting in 10 days, 11 days, whatever it is. Will this one be any different? Will it be any different? Hey, God might show up and we might break out and it might get extended two weeks. It might get extended three weeks. might even get extended four weeks, Brother Clint. What's the chances we stay in that same spirit of revival all the way to camp meeting that I talked about? Amen. Why can't we? Why can't we? I'm convinced nothing says that we have to meet every single day. I'm not saying that we have to have meeting after week after week after week. And if God lays it on our pastor's heart that we have a meeting week after week after week after week and, and, and you just get behind and your, your yard's eight feet tall and you just got to stay home mow your yard, stay home mow your yard. Brother Bob, I, I don't know the answer to that. But I know it should not affect us in having that spirit of revival. We should not have to get after all the preaching that we've heard and everything that we've been through and everything that we've seen to have to ask, God, wilt thou not revive us again? Sure. Will thou not revive us again? If this one's to be any different, we've got to have a few things. Number one, we're going to have to have some sleepless nights. And that starts tonight. That should have actually even already almost started. Not the week of. We can't expect to wake up the Friday night before revival on Sunday and then think that we're going to just spend up and stay up all night long praying that God do something and just expect God just show up. And he might. And he's such a great and wonderful God, he probably will. But hopefully we've already began in our hearts and we've already began possibly uh, in prayer having some of those sleepless nights. 
Just praying, God, just show up. Just do something great. Sure. Now, we'll get into some of that a little bit later. Amen. Just, just God, I just want you to show up, and I want you to send us a revival like we've never seen before. And we've seen some great ones. Not only sleepless nights in prayer, but sleepless nights in preparation. If you sing, have you asked God, God, show me what it is you may want me to sing that week. If you preach, I understand exactly who's coming in. I, I know the, the caliber of preachers that will be here. But have we still prepared our hearts as preachers just in case? Hey, what if God lays on Brother Doug's heart that you're to preach tonight? Are we ready, Brother Phil? Because I can tell you, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't expect to preach. Not with the men of God that we're going to have here. What if God says that's what he wants? You might think, well, I can't sing. I'm not, I, I can't sing like Brother Clint. I, I, I was joking with him tonight. I walked in, I shook Brother Josh's hand, and I didn't ask Josh to sing. I asked the other Josh to sing. I asked Seth, I said, you going to sing for me tonight? Now, we can, it's easy to say, it's easy for me, hey, Seth, I can't sing either, buddy. It's easy for me to say, God's not going to ask me to sing, I can't sing. What if he does? Have we began to prepare our hearts for whatever God has for us that week? Have you prepared to be the person that, you know what, you might not sing, you might not be the one to get up and preach, but you might be the one to make sure that you might get out of your comfort zone and be the one standing back here at those two double doors, shaking people's hands and just welcoming them as they walk in. Have you began to prepare your heart and prepare yourself for their God to be able to use you in any capacity that week? That begins now. Not the week of, not the day of. To prepare and truly seek out starting now. Not only does it going to take some sleepless nights, it's also going to take some selflessness. What do you mean selflessness? Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now if we can sing, if you can shake hands, if you can share and welcome people here, by all means you need to be ready and be prepared to do those things. But we should not believe and think that revival rests on my plate. We should not think, well, if I don't get to sing, God's not going to meet with us. Because none of us in here are that important. We need to make sure that we've let go of our ego when we walked in here. Brother Doug even talked about it on Sunday evening, I, talk, I believe it was, talking about how uh, God used Zach to stand, uh, Brother Zachary to stand up one time. I remember meeting, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Saturday night prayer, and, and Brother Doug just opened it up. Everybody get around the altar, you go to the Sunday school rooms, go wherever you want to go, and you just pray. And if I'm not mistaken, it was somewhere right over here, Brother Zachary just started praying, and God just broke out in that prayer meeting that night. See, it's not about our egos. Not about us thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm the, the best singer here, the best preacher here, the best handshaker here, or I'm the whatever. It's God, you just use me however you want to use me. Yeah. Coming in and having that selflessness. If God wants me to sit back here in the corner and not do a thing, then I'll sit back here in the corner and not do a thing. But just allowing God to use us in any way possible. The third thing, I'm going through this really, really fast. Everybody got really quiet. <laughs> Tina asked me. It was funny. She asked me. She gets it off at 7. She's probably uh, almost home by now. She asked me if I would beat her home tonight. And I was like, no, I don't think I'll start preaching before then. <laughs> Come close to be beating her home. The third thing it's going to take if we're going to have something different, it's going to take sacrifice. In Romans chapter number 8 and verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I talked about it a little bit. What happens if Brother Doug, if God lays it on his heart that we do have three, four, five weeks in a row? Well, we're going to be tired. What's that got to do with heaven? What's that got to do with anything? I can't imagine standing before God, Brother Bob, and having to answer that somebody didn't come the third week of revival and get saved because we all complained we were too tired. Right. We all complained, it's just been, Brother Doug, it's just been tough. I just can't, but look, I, you know, I've, I've got 18 hours on my DVR, my shows that I've missed, my yard's a foot tall, I'm just wore out, my, my laundry is stacked up this high at the house, and i got to get all these things done. I understand all that. That might be the case. It might take a little bit of sacrifice to get out of our comfort zone. You know what? The laundry pile's going to have to get this high. Tell your neighbor to mow your yard. 
That wouldn't go over good with my liberal neighbor. He probably wouldn't like that too much. But we're going to have to sacrifice some of our time. We're going to have to be willing to give of our time in prayer and preparation that we talked about. Maybe it is in that week or that two weeks or whatever it may be. Not only are we going to have to sacrifice our, sacrifice our time, we're going to have to sacrifice our trials. See, if we want revival to break out and God to truly do something, I don't want to be mean here, but we can't come in with our bottom lip rubbing the ground every time we walk in. We go through things. Life's tough. Life stinks. Life's terrible sometimes. It can be hard sometimes. But we need to come in with our hearts and minds prepared for what God has for us. We need to come in and, and get rid of those things at the back door and not bring them in or come in and give them to God, lay them down on the altar and say, God, I just want you to meet with me tonight. Lord, this has been going on. And this is going on in my job. This is going on with my best friend. This is going on here. This is going on there. God, I'm going to lay it down and give it to you. And I just want you to take it because I just come here tonight. I just want to worship you. And I don't want anything that I'm going through to hinder your work here tonight. I don't want nothing that I, that I am facing to hinder anything you want to do tonight. We're going to have to sacrifice our time. We're going to have to sacrifice our trials. We're going to have to sacrifice ourselves for, the, for whatever it is that God wants us to do. The fourth thing, Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. We all need to come in with a single agenda. We just want God to show up. If we, it might be that, that Brother Clint wants has people that, that are lost that he's praying for to get saved. It might be we might have, Brother Donald, you might have a, a, a co-worker you want to see get saved. Or it might be you have a, a Miss Crystal, a, 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 somebody you need to see to get healed. We just need God to show up and do any of those things. Whatever it is. God, we just want you to show up. We want you to show up and show out and do something great for each and every one of us. A single agenda. We used to have it at one point in time. Sister Pam had put on that bulletin board in the thing of all being one accord. One goal. We should all come with one goal that week of revival, just to see God show up. Right. We want to see God show up and God show out and just do something extraordinary. Do something that we've never seen at Emmanuel Baptist Church. And think about that. Think about some of the things that we've seen. Think just what we've seen last summer. Just last summer, the people that God saved. Last summer, in the middle of a pandemic, everything that God did for Emmanuel Baptist Church. Yet I'm afraid that we return to just leaves. I'm afraid we've gotten back away and we've gotten so far away from that that we've forgotten. Because too many times we don't have a single agenda. We don't come in just wanting God to show up. We come in, God, I want you to do this or do that, or I just want to, I want to come in and I want to do this and do that, and we come in and dragging things of the world in here with us. We sit in here and, and our mind's constantly on everything else outside of there instead of just thinking about what God wants to do for us. The fifth thing, turn with me over to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Something we all know. I'm not going to read anything that's new here this evening. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. If it's going to be any different this time, we have to realize the seriousness in some things. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse number 1. This also, this know also that in the last day perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such, turn away. We know perilous times are here. We know all these things that we just talked about right there are in the world. But if we want revival this time to be something different, if we want it to be something like we've never seen before, we have to realize the seriousness in number one, in our sin. How many of those things would God find in the church if he came back tonight? 
How many of these descriptions of people would he find sitting in churches if he came back tonight? How many of these things do we think that we can go out and do whatever it is that we want to and come in here and just expect God just to show up? We have to realize the seriousness in our sin. We have to realize the seriousness in we can't just go out all day Monday and all day, or starting on Sunday, all day uh, Sunday between services and Monday and Tuesday and all the days of revival, just go out and live however we want to and then we can come in and God's just going to meet with us. Not only do we have to realize the seriousness in our sin, we have to realize the seriousness for the saints. Revive. We always talk about it. you can't revive something that's dead, Brother James. It's not for the lost, it's for the saved. Now, we would hope that revival will break out and it will spread across our, our, our community, and I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. But we have to realize the seriousness that it's going to take for us. We know this is what the Bible talks about, that we are in those perilous times. We know that these things are going to happen, and we know how close we are to the Lord's return. But we don't know that it's going to be tonight, like we talked about earlier, Brother Ray. We don't know that he is going to come back tonight. We don't know just how bad things might get. We don't know how much, how much, how many more things we might face. Do you realize in, in going out and passing out tracks, and and I ran into more people uh, this past Monday night who actually was able to hand something to than I than I ever remember. I guess those first nice days, uh, people were outside. People had their inside doors open. They could see you walk up and hang stuff on. Uh, they had those ring doorbells. They didn't tell me to get away or anything like that. But there might come a time, Brother Donald, that that starts to happen a little bit more often. I don't want any of your stuff. What are we going to do? It might happen that we get to the point where we're not allowed and they do try to stop us from coming and worship. Look, it happened was that in Texas here a couple years ago, they was trying to make anything you preach to hate crime. It might get worse. We need that revival to help strengthen our faith and strengthen our hearts and strengthen ourselves so that when those things start to take place and a lost world does look at us, there's something different about him. That brother Ray, there's something different about him. I need to see what it is he's got. Why? Because we need to realize the seriousness that this is for salvation. Yep, right. We're getting to those last days. We're getting to those last times. We claim and we say that we're concerned about the lost. I heard this today, or I heard this this week listening to a podcast earlier this week. I believe, Brother James, you might know this. Is it Elgin Baylor that passed away? Elgin Baylor, former NBA player. The podcast I was listening to said he heard the fact that Elgin Baylor had passed away. His first thought, this person said, my first thought was, I sure hope he was saved. Now, what was my first thought? The last movie star, the last sports hero, the last anybody in this world that we heard died, was that my first thought, Brother Clint? I hope they were saved. Because they have souls just like us. Just like our friends, just like our co-workers, just like any of those. Our pastor does some funerals at the, at the funeral home. I would be willing to bet somewhere in Boone County there's probably a funeral every single day. How often are we concerned about if those people are lost or not? How often are we truly concerned about how many people die in this world daily and go out into eternity and spend eternity in hell? If that's not our first thought when we think of those things. I understand certain things take their place. You might hear Elgin Baylor and you think, wow, what a great NBA player. But are we concerned about their soul at all? Boy, I hope somebody got him the gospel at some point in time in his life. I didn't know him, but I still don't want to see anybody have to spend eternity in hell. Why do we not see that? Because the last thing for tonight. I was getting my hair cut Monday. I have a very simple haircut. Almost like you guys get, Brother Christian. Just take this one, go this way, and this go this way, and I'm done. So I usually go to Great Clips. You can't mess it up just running clippers through hair, Brother Bob. Just, you know, I'm literally in and out in probably 10 minutes. As a matter of fact, I got home. Uh, uh, Tina was off on Monday, so she took Bella to physical therapy. And I hung up as I pulled into Great Clips parking lot, and PT was supposed to start at 4. I had my haircut and was home 
before they ever got before Bell ever went into PT. But I'm sitting in there getting my hair cut. And the lady that's cutting my hair, because it's so easy, I don't have any particular person I use. I don't care. But you could tell I think she was kind of new, Miss Crystal, because she was just she would ask questions to make conversation, but it was just kind of nervousness a little bit about her. So she asked me if I was enjoying the weather, told her just got off work, and then she asked me uh, um, if I lived around there. I said, yeah, I live about five minutes from here. I said, how about you? You live around here anywhere? She's like, yeah, I, just, I live right at the end of um, Pleasant Valley. I was like, cool, Miss Mary. Like, I go to church at the end of Pleasant Valley. You know what she said, James? Everybody in here probably gets exactly what she said. The vineyard. What did Brother Doug ask us on Sunday? How much is our church known throughout the community? If we want this revival to be something different, what's your vision for this revival? I told her, I said, no. I said, I don't go to the vineyard. I said, Emmanuel Baptist Church, it's right before the vineyard. And she's like, oh, she goes, I've seen that church. She said, she told me she goes to Florence Baptist. Said, but she don't like a big church. She would prefer a smaller church. I'm like, well, I don't know what you call big, what you call small. I said, I think our church is pretty small. I said, even if you want to classify it as big, I said, everybody knows everybody. I said, I don't, you know, everybody knows who you are. She said, I like that. I was like, we'd love to have you. I said, we're having revival here in a couple of weeks. Any night you want to come. I said, we're right down there close to you. Stop on by. I don't know if she'll come or not. She just acted like it sounded interesting. But I thought, why is it that anybody we talk about, the meetings that we've had, the revivals that we've had, everything that we've gone through, if you tell them you go to church at the end of Pleasant Valley, the first thing they say is the vineyard. Why aren't we known more? Why, when you say, I go to church out at the end of Pleasant Valley, why does they say, you go to that Emmanuel Baptist Church? Well, I, you all, have, I've heard some great, wonderful things about you. Our pastor talks about we're known all throughout the world from the preachers that come through and go out. What's your vision? What's your vision for revival? Brother Tommy, this might just be me, that, that this just me. I can see Brother Cody up here preaching. I can see Brother Daniel Waters standing over there playing and just singing his heart out. I can see, I believe, is it the Harris sisters? I think, it's, I think it was their last name. I don't remember for sure. I can see them up here singing. I can see some of our own people up here singing. I can see some of our own people, our pastor maybe even starting to preach. I can see Brother Bobby Cato just sitting back there just having a grand old time. I can see Brother Greg sitting over here just having a grand old time if he gets to come. What do we see after that fact? Brother Phil, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to talk to Brother Phil. I'm sorry. I don't usually move. Brother Aaron, you're going to have to move with me. So I, we've had this conversation before when Brother Doug's talked about it. I left on Sunday. Brother Doug talked about the vineyard was back to having church again. When I left on Sunday, I didn't see hardly anybody there, Brother Phil. See, we had the same thought, didn't we? It's like, see, God can still give us all that. We got, what, two or three houses right here? Imagine all the preachers we put in these two or three houses right through here instead of paying for hotels for this net when they come up through, through revival or through camp meeting. Do we have a vision like that? If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Lisa, you came to our church because you drove by and just wanted to stop. Who was the last person that came to our church that they just got so burdened that they want to see what our church is all about, they just pulled in? What's our vision? What's our vision? Do we just see a week of meeting, or do we see God truly showing up? Can you picture just chairs all around this back wall because it's just a, 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 just a string of traffic coming in here? Do we have a vision like that? Or do we just see a week meeting? Hey, maybe it gets on real good and Brother Doug extends it for a second week. Or do we see God truly showing up and doing something great? Do we see God truly showing up that, we talk, that, that you hear talked about back in the day? Is not the same God today, yesterday, and forever? So isn't the same God that we hear about revivals from over hundreds of years ago, isn't the same God that can still do the same thing now? Couldn't he still shut things down on Sunday because everybody wants to flock to Emmanuel Baptist Church? What's your vision? I can see it. A walkway back here behind that fence from here to the other church. You do whatever you want to put here, whatever you want to put. I, I don't know. But we don't have that vision. What's the Bible tell us? Where there is no vision, the people perish. What if this is our last one? I'm not saying it is, and I'm not trying to scare you into anything by no stretch of the imagination. I do know God's been very, very, very good to Emmanuel Baptist Church. And too many times when we come up with these revivals, wilt thou not revive us again? 
and again and again. Is this one going to be any different? Will we forget about it by the time camp meeting rolls around? Why can't we? As I prayed about earlier, why can't we? Camp meeting just be the, whatever you want to call it, the cherry on top of the icing on top of the ice cream on top of the cake or whatever it may be from what starts April the 4th or what starts this upcoming Sunday. Do we have that vision that God can just meet with us just week after week after week? And it might not be a steady stream of meetings, just to having that spirit of revival that we walk in here and we are just excited to see what God's going to do from service to service. We walk in just saying, boy, I, can't, I, I know what God did this past Sunday, but I can't wait to do what he's going to do this week. Is that not how it was last summer with revivals? Boy, God saved so many young people that last week, I can't wait to see what he's going to do this week. I remember sitting down, I remember sitting down in, in uh, um, where did we go last year, Miss Don? Myrtle Beach, right? I remember sitting in Myrtle Beach that Friday night. Boy, I hope he extends it. I hope he extends it. And he pushed it back and they, you know, skipped a week and did a week. Are we that way when we come into church on Sundays? Well, I'd love to see revival break out this week. I hope revival breaks out this Sunday and we just get to have a meeting this week. It's going to rain all this week. Might as well be in church. Can't do nothing outside. I don't know if it's going to rain next week or not. Ask Bella. She probably knows. But is this one going to be any different? Have you prepared your heart and mind for this revival to see it be completely different than anything we've ever experienced. So that we don't have to get back to that verse. Wilt thou not revive us again, O Lord? Instead, we come in time after time on fire for God. If we are honest with ourselves and we believe the Bible, we know we're running out of time. It's not that this could be the last one because God might not give us another one. This could be our last one because he could return a week later. Are we prepared to want to see God do everything he can to make sure we see as many people lost throughout this Florence community to get saved before it's too late? Or are we just hoping to hear some good preaching and some good singing and just have a grand old time that week? Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.